All right, my name is Jack Klausmans. I'm here to talk, you about, uh, talk to you about my slime tool I made for the game teams, for one of the game teams. And um, so why would you build a slime tool like this? These are some beta screenshots from the team. They wanted to decorate uh, pretty big levels with slimes all over the place, and the level designers wanted to block certain doors or hallways with slime. So then, of course, this slime can be moved at any moment. So I'll now show a quick flyover of the tool. So first, you have to say to the tool which uh, geometry of the world you want the slime to collide or attach to. And there are three editor modes. First, you have uh, curve editing, which you can place the curve quickly. And then uh, you have a simulation preview mode, and then the final mode, which the slime gets generated. Um, yeah, here you can see the curve editor mode, which quickly gives a preview of the base, uh, base, shape of the uh, base shape of the slime. And you can choose if it's only on the geometry itself or both. This is the preview mode. We have these plus and min buttons, because if you scroll in the slider, then Unreal only decides to update the slime when you let go of it. So with plus and min, you can sort of click through every frame. And this is then the final result. So you see that the slime, the shape, and the simulation are quickly adjustable by the user. And like the final result takes about 15 seconds to generate. But this, of course, gets increasingly larger when you create a lot of slime. So the tool uses the user curve and the world geometry, and then outputs a complete package with vertex colors, collisions, three LED levels, and uh, point instances for decals. So we start with the lines that the, the user creates, and then the tool uh, checks if the lines go through the, yeah, the world, and then it creates separate lines for them with curve view attributes, and I cr use this uh, throughout the tool with different ways. And for example, here I use a parabolic gradient to scale the initial points that are scattered on it. So let's focus on one part. Um, here the points are in primitives, so there are separate lines, which enables me to loop over them. So I can then connect each point from each to their corresponding in the next thing to create lines along the curve. This is then a user parameter, and the user can then decide how dense their slime line is. Um, the ends then get ray traced back onto the geometry, and then the points that are close to the geometry make even more points in the geometry. I then use um, connect adjacent pieces in Houdini to connect the points and to get a structure around the environment. Then this structure, we want to connect it back to sort of the, the baselines to make the slime hangy and really connect it to the environment. And I actually wrote my own fax code for this because connect adjacent pieces only connects the closest points and then you get a lot of close, small lines and you don't actually get the farthest. So my tool looks for the farthest points and connects to them. Then I smooth it and then I do it again but then with a little less distance to get even more connections. Then a really important part is that I disk or I resample everything with a set distance. And then I use connect adjacent species to connect it back together again to get sort of one mesh. Because if you don't do this, then the slime will basically fall apart completely in the simulation. So then here you see a different amount of the density lines and how it affects the shape. And this is then the curve editor mode you see in, the, in Unreal. Um, then there are two parts of simulation. This is the first one. And I used the curve view attribute again to uh, pin the ends. And I also use it to, um, to, yeah, to let the little middle part droop farther to the ground and sort of have an intensity that follows that. Then the second part um, isolates certain parts of the slime, which is also a control body by the user. This is an extreme part where I crank the parameters completely up. And then that simulation only runs on those parts, uh, making it very uh, fast and also previewable in the engine. And this is then the engine preview. And then to generate geometry from that, um, this is also 
one big fax node which checks the colors. Um, and so, for example, the blue colors, they uh, get more uh, thickness when they um, are like at the bottom of their bounding box, so that you sort of get droops. And the uh, white parts, they are getting their thickness from how many surrounding points there are around them, getting this sort of stringy feel. And this whole mesh then goes into VDB. It then gets remeshed, and this happens then two times for all the LODs. I also bring the colors back in, and then I also make the blue color um, um, a remapped value from 0 to 1 for each blue part, so that in the shader you can sort of swing the blue parts uh, back and forth. And then the tool creates collision. And then finally, when uh, oh, sorry, the, the tool also checks around the parameter uh, of the environment and then places the points to um, set some decals. And then the final stage is in engine, and then this is it. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you found it interesting, follow me on my show shows, and I'm available for a challenging internship starting in December. Okay, we can take some questions, and uh, I will also give the mic to the to the students to then answer the question that's addressed to them.